My whole case on abortion, why abortion is justified. I'm a staunch pro-abortionist, pro the right to abortion. And it rests on a couple of points. That first, that the embryo and the fetus are not human beings. And second, that the parents, and specifically the mother, is a human being. That's it, if you understand those points. Because it means that the embryo and the fetus has no rights, and the mother has all the rights in the Declaration of Independence including the right to dispose of tissue in her own body as she chooses. If you deny a woman the right to abortion on demand, you are sacrificing the only real human being in this situation to a cluster of rightless cells. You are telling the real person, the mother, you have no right to liberty. You must have a life of child raising and child nurturing Give up the pursuit of happiness as you see it and as you want it, and here's the duty which we are assigning to you for life. Now, I say that as sacrificing the mother who has rights to tissue which doesn't. So you see, I reject the conventional labels in this discussion. I don't grant to anti-abortionists that they are pro-life. The only human life involved and the only right involved is the mother's her right to liberty, including her right to use her body as she chooses. So if you want to call yourself a defender of life or the right to life, you have to be pro-abortion. By the same token, I don't call myself a champion of pro-choice. Of course, I think a woman has a right to choose, but that's not a primary. She can choose only what doesn't violate the rights of others. She has no right to choose murder. So it's a stupid superficiality for the uh, pro-abortionists to say we stand for choice. You've got to go deeper than that. Abortion would be murder if the fetus were a person. So you've got to start on that level. Now, I say that the fetus is not a person because of one fundamental fact, and that is the difference between the potential and the actual, between what can be and what is. A sperm egg combination is potentially a human being. If it stays in the mother's womb for nine months and receives all the necessary conditions, nutriments, so on, then it will grow into being a baby, a person, a human being with rights. But as an egg sperm, it's not yet a person. It's merely the potentiality, the possibility of somebody becoming a person. You don't gain the prerogatives of a person until you become one. You can't say that a sperm has the rights of a human being simply because it might become one someday. Potentialities don't have rights. Only what is actual doesn't. What is actual pre-birth is a tissue cluster, a mass of protoplasm, a part living in and on a woman's body. It can become a baby, but it is not yet. Now, this distinction between the potential and the actual was coined by Aristotle. It's central to all thought. It's nothing esoteric about it. An acorn is a potential oak tree, but not an actual one. A cow is potentially a filet mignon. A waterfall is potentially electric power. Iron ore in the ground has the potential to become steel girders. But no sane person would say, let's build a house out of acorns. It's the same as oaks. Or let's pour steak sauce on a cow. Or let's cook the cow by plugging the stove into a waterfall. That's what it would mean if you mix up the potential and the actual. The potential can be, but is not yet. If you try to equate those two and then act, you could with total logic go like this. An adult is a potential corpse. Therefore, we can bury him alive or vivisect him for medical students right now. Surely you would rush in to object and say, he can become a corpse, but that's utterly different from he is a corpse. By the identical reasoning, the embryo can become a person, but that is utterly different from saying it is a person. So now the question is, well, what is it to be a person? 
I said you have to meet the requirement of being a person. You have to be a living organism, something that exists apart as an entity on its own, in its own right. A person is a certain kind of living entity. And the precondition of this is that the entity be a separate, biologically formed thing. An independently existing, biologically formed thing that breathes, digests, moves, lives on its own. What is the essence of life, after all? It's what Ayn Rand calls self-sustaining and self-generated action. Self-sustaining, it acts to keep itself alive. Self-generated, it is its own motive power, its own energy source. And this is crucial. What is the difference between a man and an android? The crucial one is that the robot, the android, doesn't move on its own. It doesn't manufacture and create its own energy source. It is not self-moving. It is not self-generated. It has to be plugged in into an external source of energy. And the whole meaning of a living thing is it does not have to be plugged in. It's self-sustaining and self-generated. If it's a man, it breathes, digests, its lungs take in air, its hearts pump blood on its own by its own energy. It's not plugged into another creature's body. It's not plugged into a technology. It lives apart as a separate entity, not a parasite. That's the only type of thing that can have rights. Now you're going to say, well, is a child then human since it's not independent? Yes, it's human because the child is dependent in many senses for food, shelter, clothing, and so on. But that's irrelevant. The issue is, are you a formed living entity, yes or no? The embryo and fetus is not biologically formed. It lives within the body of another and it cannot claim any prerogatives against its host.